welcome to our youth Sunday where we are celebrating our graduates for the year of 2021. And we are so proud of you graduates for all your hard work through the virtual realm, through the hybrid realm. We welcome you and we honor you this morning. So we ask that you like and you share this experience because we are honoring you all Sunday long and on this weekend. So we praise God for you. Welcome. Now let's praise the Lord.
But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of the heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their heads and blessed them before he left. The New Testament will come from Proverbs 22, verse 6. Direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave. Amen. Amen.
this Sunday before everyone goes back to in-person worship. So I'm super glad to be here. Uh, and it is graduation Sunday, and as a graduate myself, I kind of toyed with uh, what to speak about today. And so I actually wrote this series talking about true friends. But I condensed it to sort of uh, make it what graduates kind of want to hear. Because when going to college and being on your own, we have to deal with friendships. And mom and dad, grandma and grandpa aren't there. So who do we turn to? We turn to Jesus. So in this lesson, this sermon, we get a vision, a big vision, God's vision for friendship. So we all know that in this world, we, we, we're never going to have perfect friendships. But we'll have true friends. And the mere fact is that we make friendship impossible when we hold friends to such a high standard. And that's for some of us, but for some of us, we settle in friendship because we don't know what a true friend is. And so we're toying with this idea of true. And I'm putting that in front of a true, a friend, because a true friend uh, is this kind of acronym I've created. So if you're taking notes, you might want to write this down. So a true friend is truthful. A true friend is restorative. A true friend is understanding. And a true friend is enduring. And these type of friends are willing to help you. They're willing to tell the truth. They're in it for you. And they're with you 100%. And a true friend wants to know you and understand you. And enduring says that they're going to make it through the hard times. And get this, the friendship might not last forever, but the impact can. So I'm sure you're like, well, I try to be true friend, and like, I'm, I'm failing being a true friend. But Jesus is the true friend, and he makes true friends possible. So God is so good, y'all. He enables us to become a true friend by making us new creations. He equips us by showing us what it looks like to be a true friend. What else does he do? He empowers us through his spirit dwelling through us, just like that same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It lives in us, and it enables us and empowers us to become true friends. So I want us to think about that vision as we talk today, because let me tell you, if communion with God is our purpose, if that's our why, then we need a community, we need friends that are gonna walk with us, amen? Amen. So here we go, this is what we're talking about today. What does it mean when friendships get difficult? This is actually part two of the series, but I thought people are going to college, friendships are gonna get difficult. So I wanna call your attention to Matthew 18, 15 through 22. And I'm just going to read this. And so this is, you know, in my studies in North Carolina, I took many religion classes. And so it allowed me, for me, it allowed me to come closer to God. So a little bit of background. This scripture is what is known as the fourth discourse of Jesus. So that means it is like his fourth teaching. You see in Matthew, Jesus just teaches a bunch. We learn so much. So the first discourse we all know is the Sermon on the Mount. The fifth would be the Garden of Gethsemane. And this teaching is a response to Jesus being Savior. And our response is community. So here in Matthew 18, 15 through 22, it says, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? Jesus says, or he says, many as seven times. Jesus says to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Let us pray. God, we thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for uh, just, just life. God. We thank you for being here. Lord, as I speak today, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Amen. So here we see Peter, he, he kind of questions. He's like, seven? 
70 times, God. Jesus says, no, 77 times. So here we are, friendship, true friends, things get difficult. So lots of us say we have good friends, but do we truly? Are these the friends we want? A lot of us are what I, what, uh, sorry, a lot of us are what I call the honeymoon phase of friendship. So it's like, y'all are friends, y'all are cool, y'all agree on everything, but like, outside of that, we don't talk, we, we never call, we never talk. That, that's not friendship. But see, here's the thing about friendship, y'all, that I always say, people are like, what does that even mean? Friendships are beautiful. Friendships are great until it's not great. One day somebody says something and it just doesn't work anymore. We all want good friendships, and I'll tell you, if you have good friends, it gets difficult, and there will be difficulty. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. So here's the real question. When it gets difficult, what do we do? What happens? You know, you're on campus, and you know, these, these cute girls and cute guys that live across the street, and they love Jesus, but it gets bad. So what do you do? What happens when the boys stab you in the back? There's no plan, but Jesus has a plan, and he leads us through it right here in his text. So I want to unpack this passage for you, and you're going to write down, you're going to want to write down these four things I'm about to tell you. So how can we, how can we be ready? What do we do? So number one, when friendship gets difficult, you want to talk to your friend. you got to talk to your friend, y'all, through hurt, through betrayal, through everything. you got to talk to your friend. Talking to your friend, not about your friend. you got to talk to your friend, not about your friend. It's so easy to talk about your friend to somebody else. It's easy to call your other friend and have a session about your friend that made you mad, right? Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, go talk between you and him alone. I know that sounds crazy, but tell your friend his or her fault, right? But other versions say, point out your fault. True. The acronym I gave you is a great way to point it out. Because reality is, you don't know it all. But what you do know is that it hurt you, whatever it is. So listen, I know the tendency is to, because I can do this a lot, you know, we have siblings, we have brothers. So we get in this, this talk with our friends or our brother or whatever, our husband, our spouse, our wife, and you're like, you always do this. You always do that. That's not true. But you got to tell the truth, and you have to seek to be restored, right? Sometimes friends need that little extra push. Seek understanding. Communicate that you want to endure. Communicate that you want to be there with them. And when your friend listens to you, that means a lot. Okay, we're done. You can stop right there. We're done. That, that's, that, that's the main thing that fixes everything. Most of the time, we just don't talk. But here's number two. Number two, when friendship gets difficult, you need to walk with humility. Walk with humility. If your friend doesn't hear you, doesn't agree with you, walk away. In the text, it says that you go back with a few other friends. He says, take people with you. I love this. It's so complicated, but Jesus says this works, so it works, right? He says, we gather folks together, people who know them and love them, the same friend, and we have a shared conversation. And sometimes, you know, they're not going to get it. And, you know, see, the other thing is we have to realize is that you may be hurt, but there's a strong likelihood that you probably hurt them too. See, it's not about you being high and mighty. It's not about you calling your friend out. Because the truth is, you're far from perfect. It's about getting on the same page. Man, I love the idea of humility. A uh, quote by C.S. Lewis says, Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. So you need to be thinking about your friend. Here's the three, y'all. Number three. When friendship gets difficult, let boundaries fall where they fall. So here's the reality. A lot of us love boundaries. We love them. Somebody hurts you, drop them boundaries. Somebody says something about you, boundary. Even close to hurting, boundary, boundary, boundary. Let boundaries fall where they fall. Others don't like boundaries. And see, you think that's, some, some people don't like boundaries. And they're like, oh, that's being nice, that's being nice. But you think that being a follower of Jesus Christ is being a doormat. Nope. Boundaries have got to fall. Though. Boundaries are necessary. But not a weapon to yield against your friend, but rather God's protection for you. So God gives us a glimpse of vision in Psalm 16, 5 through 6. And the reality is, in friendship, we need boundaries. But to think that we know where the boundary goes, that's arrogance. Y'all, if we follow Jesus, that boundary, those boundaries are going to fall in place. And remember we said, go talk to your friend, and they don't listen, bring friends with you, that's a boundary. See, some of you are in abusive friendships. Jesus wants protection for you. Some of you are in dangerous situations. God wants security. 
hey, treat that friend like a Gentile, a tax collector. That's what he says in the passage. So what is, how does Jesus do that? What does that mean, treat him like a Gentile, a tax collector? He shares a meal with them. He dines with them. Friends that won't do anything, don't kick them out. Love them and pursue them. That's what we want to do. That's, that's humility. Here's number four, y'all. When friendship gets difficult, forgive like you've been forgiven. Jesus says it in the passage. Forgive 77 times, not seven. And for some people, I know, I know for me, seven is like, oh gosh, just so many times. Like three, you're done. Three strikes, you're out. But 77 is what he says. 77. 77. So I want to read Matthew 18 because I think that this is going to give us a good glimpse. Matthew 18 and 23. I can find it very quick. Here it is. This is the parable of the unforgiving servant. And so it says, For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents, 10,000 you know, talents is like a gazillion dollars was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have you patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And sizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw him into prison until he paid a debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. That tells it all. So we're forgiven from a debt we can't even pay back. Our kingdom is like the servant. Listen, I know, it hurts when stuff happens. I get it. But what's forgiveness? Forgiveness is not denying. Forgiveness is not condoning or removing consequences. Y'all, the kingdom of God is seen when true friends deal with difficulty well. So I'm going to end on this. Ephesians 4 says, speak the truth in love. And so oftentimes we hear, you know, this and that, and, you know, da-da-da-da, but I love you. Da-da-da-da, but I love you. I still love you, though. So in my travels, I've been going to Wilmington every now and then, and there's a church there called Port City Community Church, and one of the pastors there spoke about love, and he really broke down Ephesians. Speak the truth in love. And so I wrote down what he said. He said, speaking the truth in love means more than telling someone I'm saying this in love. If you have to identify yourself as loving, you probably don't love them or hold them to a high esteem. But he says, before you speak, tweet, write, post, ask yourself, do I really love this person? If so, speak the truth. And if not, you need to rethink yourself and look at loving like Jesus, because that's how Jesus loves. So Ephesians 4 and 32, um, I want to end on that really quickly. Ephesians 4 and 32. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. It says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So I hope you guys have listened and got something out of this, because this is all from God. Like, this is what he says, this is what he wants. I just kind of broke it down into four points. And I want you to remember this and then aim in going to sit down with your friends and have a deep friendship. And a deep friendship, y'all, is not waiting on the other side of a difficult conversation. 
A deep friendship is going there and talking to your friend. A deep friendship is, number one, it's, it's talking to your friend. A deep friendship is, when, when it gets difficult, walking with humility. A deep friendship is letting boundaries fall where they fall. And number four, the best, the one that we all have to do work on, is forgiving like you've been forgiven. Forgiving like you've been forgiven. Amen? Amen. Amen.
from shipping. And so we want to thank our dear brother Carl Chapman. Yes. 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 serve you in spirit in spirit and in truth and in truth in this life in this life and in the world to come and in the world to come in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray amen 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 pray that prayer heaven will be your home when this life on earth is over it's time to give now God has been good to you he has made a way where there was no way. If he's opened a door, if he's not giving you the opportunity to work and to earn an income, it's our responsibility to give back, to give a portion of what the Lord has blessed us with, the time and offering unto his kingdom. You may mail it in to Ebenezer A. Church 44 Nassau Street. You may go online and give online today. I'll drop it by the church office during this week. I want to pray for all givers right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that the seeds that are sown now in your kingdom will bring forth a harvest, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. We ask it all in Jesus' name. So 
we give him this flag of recognition on the 13th day of June 2021. Reverend Dr. Williams, Jr. Pastor, and the Ebenezer AME Church family. Thank you for a job well done. Oh. 